No love from Kurt. Uh oh. Six laps for fuck's sake. Biggs, slow wheels, no style. You got anything going for you? Dude, import racer is looking for cover cars. How cool is that? You win and you're in. So we gotta take Kurt out to dinner again. I guess he wasn't impressed enough last time. Or apparently we moved up the ranking sheet together because I swear to god we already beat his ass. So now we're gonna move on to rank number eight. Like, we just got to rank nine, just days ago. And now we're going to now we're gonna be um now we're gonna be rank eight. So that's good. I can't recognize his car though. We've already right there he is all the way on the far right. We already did a fucking race with this guy in the circus, like, come on. And it's also six goddamn laps, because this is necessary. We totally need this race to be this long, and there's traffic, oh great. We were blessed by the racing gods to not have traffic in the previous race, and now here we are with traffic and this shit. Great, just wonderful, just wonderful. I was thinking about playing through Test Drive 5 again, because I kind of just stopped, because, well, number one, no one really cared, and I kind of hit a brick wall with the series. I'm going to have to go back and watch it through again, I guess, to see where, where everything went wrong. Because did we do a, um, a, 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 a secondary race instead of the main race, where you go through Russia the first things first? Because I remember, like, even when I was young and bad at video games, I was able to do the secondary one, like the first one where you have that one Aztec track that's in the desert and shit. I was able to do that series just fine and win a bunch of races and actually, you know, make my way through the game, but, like, I could never do the one where you're going through the city as in, like, Moscow and shit. I could never do that, no matter what. And I think that's where I hit the brick wall, too. It's like... I actually failed to do it in the in the playthrough, and that's why I never played it again. I think is I think is the lesson I was trying to take from the, from that whole whole situation. But like, I don't even have to, I don't even have the game with me. Like, and you know the worst part about it is I totally stole that game from my grandma. I don't think it, my grandma actually bought it, but like someone in our family bought it at one point, and like I just totally stole it. Because I can tell you what happened when I got Test Drive 5. We were at my grandma's house, and this was before she went to, like, the retirement home and shit. I'm like, God, I have to be really young, because Test Drive 5 was so much of my life. So I could not have been older than six when this happened. And, like, I played it for the first time there, and I was like, wow, this game's awesome. And I was, and I just... And, you know... I don't even think I was thinking about taking it, but like my dad said, like, you know, if you like that game, we can take it for a while, but you have to keep it safe and bring it back. And then I got it, and like, everything was cool. And I remember, like, I was very young, so like, the memories are blurry, but I do distinctly remember going into that bedroom where the games were, and grabbing the game, and like, one of the other kids that was the god fucking damn, this head on traffic. One of the other kids was there was playing Bub no, Bub no, um, Crash Bandicoot 2. Or 1. One or the other. Which is another game that I stole from my dad. Because there's like a running tally of games that I stole from my dad. And it's like, where do you even get these? Like, I know he had a life before I was born. <laughs> but like, See, the weirdest thing is imagining your parents doing things that you do at your age. Like, that's the weirdest thing. Like, okay, so, when I met my dad, he was, okay, let's, let's do some compilations here. So, he's 10 years older than my mom. I was, like, five or six when all this was going on. So, he would have been 36, I'm guessing. No. 
It would have been like 34. So yeah, 34. And like this is 2003 at the latest. So like, and he had a PS1. And this is 2003 at the latest when I stole Twisted Metal from him. So he had Twisted Metal. And he also had Crash Bandicoot. No. God, it's so weird thinking that someone like my dad would play video games. And you know what? I've done it. I Before YouTube came around and I was watching that shit as my main entertainment, main source of entertainment, like, my dad would get on, yeah, you know, would get on the GameCube and he'd play like Madden 96 and I'd just sit back and watch and I'd be like, he'd do the exact same play over and over and he could then be really successful, so obviously it was on the lowest difficulty possible. But like, I sit back and I reflect on that and it's like, you know what, he really did play video games. He doesn't anymore, obviously because Pawn Stars occupies too much of his time, but it's like, oh no, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening, it's fucking happening. No, you will not fucking do this. I absolutely fucking refuse to allow that to happen. Okay, we're good. That was almost really gonna piss me off there, but um, that is that's it's just nuts to think, dude. So obviously, he has had experience with games before, but it's just like thinking that he'd be playing the games that I've played, such as Crash Bandicoot and just go. I think I unlocked something. Yeah, Flames Hood, and there we go, magazine time. Now we're talking. Thank you. I love me a magazine. Um. But like even Twisted Metal, I think he actually played Twisted Metal with me at one point. Like... And that game's fucking hard. Even on easy mode, that game's fucking hard. I don't remember if he was actually good or not, but like he owned the game and obviously must have played it at some point. So, I mean... I don't know. Import Racer. That could have done so much better. I'm like looking at this picture, I'm like... <laughs> this is obviously an action shot. There needs to be smoke in the background. There needs to be like a police car chasing him. <laughs> oh no, man. Mmm. Mmm. Maybe I'll buy, like, maybe I'll get the unique uh, tires upgrade next whenever we do the next unique part race. And then I'll get like the 240SX so we can do, so we can change the car. I mean, I like the Miata. Ooh, Drift Tournament. Slyle and Slyle. You know what? There we go. That's the moment. That's the moment I was waiting for right there. We're going to change the car up. I got, that's just vinyls. We're going to change the car for this because obviously this car is too good of handling. So we're going to pick the car that has the worst handling possible. And we're just going to do it. So let's, I wanted to drive the 240SX pretty badly, so we'll pick that one. So there it is, the new Alpine. And it's only affecting the handling is all. I don't know, maybe this is like the Impreza and has some secret acceleration to it, but... Need for Speed Underground 2, man. The same thing as Most Wanted, like... I think the difference with Most Wanted and Need for Speed Underground 2 is that, like, with Most Wanted, you can actually, like, get the pink slip of, of the of the blacklist driver's car so that that can become your new car eventually. But, like, in Need for Speed Underground 2, you're really never incentivized to buy new cars unless it's, like, a different car from your, from your starting car. Unless it's, like, the SUVs or something. Wow. Great start, I gotta say. Off to a smashing start, quite literally. Okay, just start over. I wasn't, I wasn't fucking prepared. I'm talking out of my ass and I'm just, I just need to, I just need to sit upright for, great. The exact same thing happened again. What? No, it actually counted those points. I was about to be really pissed. Oh, that's what I was waiting to see. There, see, that's what you gotta do. 
Just don't bother trying to chain the drift unless you think you can go like at a 90 degree angle. Just get in the bonus zone and do a 90 degree angle turn. Just like this. Right there. Right. Well, obviously you don't want to hit the wall and lose all the points. But like, that's the idea. See, like that? That was a pretty terrible drift, so I'm kind of defeating my own point, but... Like, if you're just doing a decent... Wow, it's not even turning. Now it's just not drifting. There we go. There we are. There we go. I was waiting to see that one right there. Oh, yeah, look at all this. All this drifting. All this making love. Okay, that was just... Bad driving on my part. You know, I keep saying, it's like, the main catchphrase of this series has been, that was just bad driving on my part. <laughs> That's the biggest quote. The biggest quote. Quotation. I think that counted those points there. I don't think I lost all those points. In this case. Anyone, any names up there in the upper right that I recognize? Any names? Any names? If it could switch over and let me see the names at any point in time here. Jet, Fish, and Al. Well, it's certainly an interesting cast of characters. I can give it that I can give the game that much. So. I think we got this one though. I just need to have a good drift right here. And well, it says good drift, but I would I would venture a guess that one thousand points alone is not gonna win me this event, so. Yes, there we go. That's what I needed to do. I needed to get right on the line there. And I think we got it unlocked. This is actually, this one's actually easier than the one where we were doing the rank. Because, like, that one you need to get like 80,000 to win, and this one we are at 80,000. Like, I don't know, man. I'm just. I think I'm starting to fall asleep over here, actually. And the face cam, I was literally just about to say this that the face cam was about to run out, so there it goes. Yes, Bob. Oh God. Oh. That's gonna cease all forward momentum, so if I can get reset, get reset. Fuck! I'm stuck on a hay bale. No! I was so close to finishing fifth. I was so close to finishing fifth or sixth.